Hey everybody, hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. And I have gotten to the part of the Happy Halloween quilt by Amy Bradley Designs to create the sashing that's gonna go between all of the blocks. And I've got my werewolf block pulled up right here in Brilliance because I want to make sure that my sashing is the exact same size as the block. People may have made different size blocks based on the hoop that they have. And when you get to the point of making your sashing, you just need to be absolutely sure that your sashing height is the exact, or you know, width is the exact same size as your block. The largest part of this is the background quilting with the basting box. And I can see up here that it is nine and an eighth by 11 and an eighth. I need to have my sashing be the same size one way or the other, depending on whether you're doing vertical sashing or horizontal sashing. I am going to come over here to a new tab and this hoop right here is the big hoop for the Brother Luminaire. It's the 10 by 16. I can make a whole bunch of sashing pieces at one time. And I'm going to open up my folder with my sashing in it right here. And I'm gonna do the horizontal sashing, which is the two by nine. Here is the two by 11. These, you're gonna be able to uh, resize them just a little bit if you need to, and it's not gonna do anything to the, um, to the design at all. I'm gonna bring in the two by nine, and this does not have a basting box around it for those people who just would maybe want to put their whole quilt top together and then just embroider that in themselves. They can do that too but I want a basting box around it. So I'm gonna highlight it here in the objects panel and I'm gonna come up to utility. And if you notice, I'm not in Stitch Artist, I'm just in regular in Brilliance Essentials and I'm gonna click base design. It has placed a basting box. I can see here in the objects panel, it's right there. You need to make sure if you're doing this that your basting box, let me go to this color tab down here in the properties you want to make sure that your basting box and your sashing design are two different colors. The basting box is black and the sashing is purple. I need to back up and just, I am putting the basting box on it because I am trimming my blocks using a trimmer by George. And if you're not using the trimmer by George, then you don't probably need a basting box unless you just want an outline of where to put down your fabric in your hoop, you can do that as well. I've got one whole design now. I wanna make sure my basting box, and this says it is two and one sixteenth by nine and one sixteenth. It The two and a sixteenth is fine. That's not that big of a deal. Since all of my blocks are using a one eighth inch on the sides for my trimming. I'm gonna go ahead and change these to a one and one eighth inch. You need to make sure that your lock is unlocked and I'm just gonna put an eight right there and also on this one. That sets my basting box to a size that is gonna equal the block itself, the monster blocks. Now I'm gonna control A to select all. I just want to rotate this 90 degrees, doesn't matter which direction. And if you need to make multiples of something very quickly, you can easily come up to utility and there is instant repeat. So I'm gonna click that and here it wants to know how many across or how many down. I'm going to do five down and then for the vertical spacing, I'm going to put 26 millimeters and that's approximately an inch, which is perfect between them. And I'm going to tell it okay and make sure I'm going to use my arrow keys and just move them up. 
that's a really easy way to make multiples. And now what I want to do is to color sort these so that the basting boxes all stitch down at one time on my batting. Then I'm going to lay down my fabric on top of that. Then I'm going to use the needle plus minus and run the basting box again. And the first time is just to make sure I get it completely covered with all the fabric, but I, I know I will. And then I'm going to run it again and this time it'll stitch everything the way it needs to. I, while they're all selected, I'm gonna come up to utility and color sort. This is in Embrayance Essentials. If you only have Stitch Artist and you don't have Essentials, you won't have the color sort. It's reduced it by eight color changes and I'm not gonna click save, I'm gonna click new view. And what that does is over here in the objects panel, you can tell it changes it to the basting boxes all go down at once and then the embroidery designs all go down after that. That's very, very handy if you've got different colors you're doing or different fabrics and whatnot as well. But that's a great and easy, simple way to do multiples. All right, I'm gonna go up to utility, uh, Wi-Fi to brother baby lock. I've been asked if this also works with other machines that have wireless capability and I do not believe so. You can always give it a try, but I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure it does not work. I want to make sure, I'm just gonna put two by nine horizontal sashing. And tell it okay. And let's see, file sent to machine, excellent. All right, that's it. It's time to go stitch these out. This is exactly the same thing I'm gonna do for all of the horizontal sashing, all of the vertical and all of the cornerstones be done just like this. Well, I'm getting ready to stitch out that five, those five horizontal sashing blocks. I've already got black thread in the machine and I have loaded the big 10 by 16 hoop. That's one of the benefits to having a ginormous hoop is the ability to do those multiples and get your projects done a lot more efficiently. I'm gonna bring you guys in here and show you what I'm doing. I'm gonna touch the screen. I'm gonna go to embroidery and the pocket for memory. And I sent it wirelessly, so I'm gonna click on those little radar waves. And here it is right here, two by nine horizontal sashing. Perfect, I'm gonna tell it set. And it's ready to go. I've got embroidery bobbin thread in, and I am using no-show mesh in the hoop. So I'm just going to touch embroidery, and we're ready to go. I've got a green light right here. My thread is Exquisite by Designs and Machine Embroidery. It's just gonna go ahead and do the basting boxes right now. I'm gonna stop the machine, let it cut the thread. I'm gonna go into the needle plus minus over here. I don't need all five of those basting boxes. I'm gonna go into the needle plus minus and I'm gonna jump ahead um, using the 100 stitches. There's three, there's four. There's number five, let me back up. right there and I'm gonna tell it okay and let it stitch this last one. And that's, I, I'm gonna use one whole piece of fabric. I don't need all of them stitched down. Uh-oh, doesn't look like we caught the bobbin at all on that. All right, I'm gonna go into the needle plus minus. I'm gonna go back. Whoop, too far, right there. Did not, uh, put my presser foot up. Didn't catch the bobbin thread. Sometimes that happens when doing these great big loose basting stitches. I'll just pull the bobbin out and just make sure. I'm gonna go back a couple of stitches to make sure I am 
there's the lock stitches. That's what I needed. Oh, all right. Now it'll do those lock stitches to create the knot. Total user error. In the IT world, we call that a pebcac error. Problem exists between keyboard and chair, <laughs> which would be me. <laughs> okay. I've left the selvage edge on. It doesn't matter because it's going to be cut away anyway, but I'm not going to get the sashing in that. Get this over there. Got white fuzzies everywhere here. I'm just going to smooth this out. Got extra fabric. That's okay. That will get used for sure. All right. I'm going to let it do its thing now and finish stitching out and quilting all of these sashing blocks. Okay, these are all done and now I can make a bunch more in all different sizes. I made these three the exact same way that I made the other ones and these are the ones for the, let's see, let me get into this. These are the vertical sashing. Some of them just finished on the luminaire. I can hear it finishing up there. I changed to a nine by 14 hoop and did three of the vertical sashings in here. That's just to save stabilizer and batting and fabric. And now I'm going to do the cornerstones. And because I've got this still working over on the Luminaire making these, I'm going to do the cornerstones on the 10 needle. I'm going to open up a new tab by clicking the new button here. And I want to change my preferences to the multi needle. And that's the 300 by 200, which is a 12 by 8. I'm going to click apply, tell it OK, and go through the exact same process. Let me find that cornerstone. Let's see. View. Let's go to large icons. Here it is right here. It's a 2 by 2. Bring it in. And I need to put a basting box around it so I can cut it with the trimmer by George. I'll go to utility and base design and once again change that basting design to eight. so that is one and seven eighths I need this to be two and one eighth and I don't think I have to put the parentheses I don't it does it automatically by two and one eighth that it matches with the 1 8th measurements that I have on all of my other pieces. It's going to fit 2 and an eighth. And this looks good. I need to make multiples and I'm going to come up to utility. Now, if you do not have enthusiast, you will just highlight both, right click and copy, and then on the main screen, right click and paste, and use your arrow keys to move it over and you can manually align these in your hoop. I'm going to delete this and I've got enthusiast and with that module you can tell if you have enthusiast because it looks like a single arrow up here pointing toward a stitch that is enthusiast. If you have that icon right there on your toolbar then you can go to utility and use instant repeat. This hoop is 11 and 3 sixteenths instant repeat. Let's do four across and two down with a horizontal space of 26 millimeters and a vertical space of 26 millimeters and click OK. That's great. And now I want to center these in the hoop. I'm just going to click the center in the hoop button. The way this looks, I don't think, I think the machine might, might tell me I need a bigger hoop. I don't know. And Brilliance is saying that it'll work. Well, I guess we can give it a try. <laughs> I'm going to save this to um, a USB 
because right now my embrilliance is configured to send this design to my luminaire wirelessly. If I turn on the 10 needle and try to send it over there wirelessly, it'll get confused and it won't work. It can only do one at a time. Let me go find a USB. So I'm gonna go my USB now and I'm going to go to my cornerstones and tell it set and it looks like I'm up at the top of the hoop. I'm not sure. I'm gonna tell it edit end, change to a larger embroidery frame. That is not working. Ugh. This is my life. So I went into my settings and it thought I had a, a five by seven hoop on and I didn't. I'm using the, uh, the 8x12 magnetic hoop from Dime. So I just tightened the thumb screws, realigned them a little bit, and I could see the numbers change right here. And it's good now. So I'm going to tell it okay. That may have been the problem from the beginning. I don't know, but it's fine. So right now it looks like it's okay. I'm going to tell it edit end. Ah, it is happy. Okay. To see where this is going to stitch, just because I had it aligned at the top in the software does not mean it's going to be aligned at the top on the fabric. So let's do a trace. And when you do the trace, yeah, it's all the way down here. So it is not at the top of the hoop. I touched the button before I got a chance to show you guys. It's this square with an arrow kind of going around it. And what it does is it drops the first needle foot just a little bit. I'll do it again and show you. So you touch that and it drops the first needle and then you can kind of trace where that first needle is going to go. So, I do want to move it up. So let me do this. As high as it'll let me go. To move it faster, you can touch these arrows. Uh, one arrow moves it just a tiny bit, two arrows moves it a medium amount, three arrows moves it a bunch. There. Ooh, look at that. All right, so let's do a trace now. Let's see how it does. I'm going to touch that button. All the way up to here. That's good. All right, that's going to leave me the space I need to get enough out of this piece of fabric. That makes me happy. All right, we are ready to go. So I'm going to touch the three spools here. I have, um, if, if you cannot use those three spools, go into your setting, if they're grayed out for you and you wanna go to page, let's see, page seven, manual color sequence, make sure that is on. And then you can tell it to use whichever spool you want going to tell it okay. So how when you touch the three spools you get a preview of everything that it is and so this is all of the basting boxes. I want that to be on spool number three and then for the second all of the uh, stitching I want that to be spool number three as well and I'm going to tell it okay. And embroidery it's ready to go. I'm going to tell it lock and go.
Oh, these look great. Okay. And I've got enough fabric down here to be able to get that extra one that I need. So two more hoopings of this and then make one extra and I'll be done.